All right, you guys, it's over. Generative AI and ChatGPT are here, and data scientists have basically automated their own jobs away. So you might as well just learn to weld or how to do electrical work or something at this point, because in five more years, there's not gonna be any more data science jobs left. It's, it's over. Yes, I'm joking, but this has been a thing as long as I can remember it, but it's been particularly bad over the last 18 months or so. Just these articles and videos, one after another, about how data science is in some phase of its death, whether that means being dead in five years or already being dead. About four years ago, I made a video titled, Will Data Science Die in Five Years? And at that time, the big thing everybody was afraid of was AutoML. So it's only been four years since then, but unless something really drastic happens in the next year or so, I'd say we made it. But here we are, it's 2024, and ChatGPT has barely been available to the public for a year now. So things are changing fast, and I think it's a good time to revisit this topic and take this issue seriously. And look, all the jokes and hyperbole aside, I get it. There is real stress out there about AI and automation and tens of millions of worldwide jobs getting displaced. For some lines of work, that's absolutely a totally valid and reasonable concern. And regardless of your discipline, nobody wants to go to school or learn a trade only for in five to 10 years that not to be useful for them to be able to use that in order to take care of themselves or their family. So for data science specifically, I'm going to deep dive into the current state of it, how generative AI is gonna fit in and change things, its limitations, and then overall at a high level, what I think the future is roughly gonna look like. If all that sounds good to you, take a second to subscribe to my channel. 70% of those of you who watch my content are not subscribed, so if you aren't, please do that. Then take just Again, just one second to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So the way I like to break down this question of the future of data science is by first examining what data science is in the first place and what it's good for. And I'm also gonna throw in a personal anecdote with this that I think will illustrate things pretty nicely. So I personally look at data science as the intersection of statistics, programming, communication, and knowledge of the underlying business where that business has some sort of problem. And broadly speaking, I'd say many things, ranging from, let's say, an interactive visualization in Plotly all the way up through convolutional neural networks, fall under the umbrella of data science. But ultimately, it's about utilizing data to solve problems for and deliver value to a business. So that could look like generating insights about the past, forecasting what's likely to happen, telling the business explicitly what to do in a data-driven way, etc., etc. And it's important to point out that that job isn't easy, because if it were easy, then most of these problems would have been solved a long time ago before now. There's a project I'm personally working on today at my company, and there's been tons of brilliant people on and off it over the course of almost two years at this point. And that includes a several month long partnership with one of the leading AI companies in the world. We are still nowhere near done with this project because frankly, the stakeholders haven't gotten everything that they want and that they deserve for the investment that they've put into it. And some of that comes down to the data is just incredibly complex. So we've learned new things and the needs of the project have changed somewhat as time has gone along. But the bottom line is there's been millions of dollars of investment, almost two years of time, some of the most brilliant people I've ever worked with in my life. And that's just where things stand even with all that thrown at it. I'm offering up this anecdote because I know that I'm far from alone in this regard. There's tons of examples out there where people will throw everything in the kitchen sink at a problem, maybe come up with some really nice looking visualizations, some really interesting models, but they've failed to really measurably move the needle. It turns out that combining appropriate statistical foundation with working code on large convoluted data sets and having that translate into useful business prescriptions is really, really hard. And it takes intense, detailed domain, business, and data knowledge that sometimes takes years to accrue. 
So if there's still this many problems out there that the best and brightest minds are having difficulty solving themselves, it's probably a little bit of a stretch to say we're close to them being able to train a machine and automate it away. But of course, none of that is to suggest that AI isn't very helpful. So for ChatGPT specifically, I use it basically every day, both inside and outside of work from tasks ranging from writing SQL queries that I don't want to think about, to coming up with travel itineraries, to helping me make this video even. Now, ChatGPT is obviously far from the only AI tool that's out there. There are other examples of LLMs. One tool that people are using a lot these days that I don't use, but I know a lot of people do, is GitHub Copilot. That auto-corrects and auto-completes your code, so the use cases for that sort of speak for themselves. So to see exactly how AI is being used in data science right now, let's turn to Anaconda's State of Data Science 2023 report. All right, so for those of you who are not familiar with it, Anaconda does an annual report where they survey a very wide range of people, ranging from entry-level respondents to C-suite executives of companies. So it's incredibly comprehensive, and it's a great window into what's happening in data science that year. So 40% of people surveyed in 2023 for this report said their companies are working on their own internal generative AI tools. As far as what people are using them for, that includes content creation like text or image generation and data cleaning, visualization and analysis. In some instances, people use these tools to automate tasks and to write and debug code. As far as the concerns people raised, those include the lack of transparency and explainability in the models, as well as concerns around bias and fairness. And now this last point is pretty fascinating. About half of the respondents here reported worrying about losing their jobs to generative AI, but also organizations were found to be providing upskilling pathways for learning new AI tools and technologies. So the idea being to help the employees sort of use these tools to do more. That's pretty close to the personal use cases I've found for ChatGPT or other similar tools. I found them very helpful for, let's say, I'm writing some non-trivial query or some slightly more complex visualization where it might take anywhere from 10 minutes to up to 45 minutes, but then with using an AI tool, it takes one to three minutes. And then with that saving in time, I can go reinvest that in something else. There's definitely limitations to that though, where it's not necessarily all that it's cracked up to be. I have asked it to write some code for me before, and then the code that I've gotten back is just flat out wrong. And it wasn't because the problem was unsolvable. It was in part due to bad prompting, but I sat there for a little while trying to prompt engineer it and just trying to get it to give me a good solution back, but ultimately I wasn't successful, and then I just had to go back and solve the problem myself, which eventually I was able to do. And this isn't exactly a secret. OpenAI pretty much puts it right there as a disclaimer that ChatGPT can make mistakes, but that's not the only limitation. So I thought Forbes had a pretty good article breaking down various limitations of ChatGPT and other AI tools. Some examples they list are lack of common sense, the way humans see it, lack of emotional intelligence, limits in understanding context. That's definitely a huge one. Trouble with structured content, for that one I'd say it somewhat depends on the use case. Limitations in handling multiple tasks at once, bias, limited knowledge, accuracy problems, need for fine tuning, and computational costs and power. So again, there's some nuance to a lot of these, but overall I'd agree with more than I disagree with. So we've established many of the things that AI tools are capable of doing in the year 2024, as well as their limitations. Well, the most obvious caveat in the world here is that these limitations won't last forever. LLMs are going to get a lot more sophisticated. They're going to get a lot more emotionally intelligent, as well as be able to understand context better. And personally, I'd be shocked if very soon we don't see ChatGPT able to access databases and plug into the internet in a way to query information and basically make Google's search engine look like a child's toy. So ultimately what these tools are going to look like and be able to do in five years is anybody's guess, but it's almost certainly more than what they can do today. 
That's pending the state of the macro economy as well as the overall hype cycle, which I think is easy for people to forget in the moment, because I've personally seen this pan out more than a couple times in the technical space. So the Gartner hype cycle is a theory that emerging technologies have really five phases. There's a trigger, then there's what's called a peak of inflated expectations, then there's a trow of disillusionment, then there's a so-called slope of enlightenment where things get back to a little bit better, and then there's a plateau of productivity. And I don't know about all you all, but everything I've seen from the past 18 months has been hype, hype, hype. And that's not undeserved. I'll admit, this time does feel a little bit different from previous times when we've seen hype cycles, but this is sort of a big picture thing that's important to keep in the back of your mind, because with great hype comes great expectations, and if those expectations don't manifest into something very concrete in the real world, then sometimes unpredictable things can happen. Now having said all of that, what I personally believe is that these tools are here to stay and they are going to change the nature of data and data science work in pretty significant ways well into the future. I do think it's going to become mainstream, even more so than it is today, to automate away easy or repetitive, boring tasks. And so that's going to lead to more time being available and ultimately more things being demanded of data scientists. So just to put this as bluntly as possible, you can't have a job or rely on a job where the entire nature of that job is just to write crappy code. You have to really know what you're doing and understand the programming language you're using at a pretty deep and fundamental level. That's where years of experience and ideally some variation in that experience is helpful. Reading books helps to get you there. So starting with the basics and then working your way up to advanced concepts as you get more comfortable. As far as more ways to make your data science job AI proof, I think it's important to have a really solid foundation in statistics. Problems with real world data are complex and the solutions are usually not clear cut or obvious. So where statistics comes in is providing you with tools and methods for attacking these problems. Data science at a high level is an extremely creative field. And not to toot my own horn here, but I found that for me and my team, having that solid foundation for us helped us with our project and coming up with much better ideas than what ChatGPT had to offer us. It's also always been the case that knowledge of the business and the underlying data are important, but that's literally never been as important as it is now. The more you understand these contexts, meaning a solid statistical foundation as well as understanding the business, the more of a subject matter expert you are and the harder you are to replace, whether by machines or by other humans. And you also want to be versatile. So if you're truly full stack and you're able to do things like building full machine learning pipelines, you're in an even better shape. I think the most important thing to focus on here is not programming or any other one single skill set. It's about delivering measurable, concrete value to a business. You need to be able to measure the impact of what you're actually able to deliver. You should really honestly ask yourself if you can do that. And if the answer you come up with is no, then come up with a plan for yourself for how you get there. But if you are confident in that, then I truly don't think that you have all that much to worry about. So in conclusion, I do think data science is going to change quite a bit over the next five to 10 years, and it probably looks like the standards for it getting somewhat higher. But from what I know of AI tools and the challenges they face, as well as data science and what a complex and difficult field it really is, I can say with a pretty high degree of confidence, unless your job literally comes down to writing simple, crappy code, then no, ChatGPT is probably not going to take your job anytime soon. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you hated it, I guess you're free to hit the dislike button. And then leave me a comment down below. Do you agree with my take here? Do you disagree with it? Let's have a discussion. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.